Well, welcome back to my Quest New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling. I should we see what's going on on our wonderful, lovely island of One Holly today. As we sort of, we're going to be vibing out. We're going to be doing something. I don't know. I don't really have anything to talk about. Oh, you know what I can talk about? Um, there was a game trailer from, I can't remember what the studios is. Is it 2K Studios? No. Is it about the people who did Heroes of New York? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Heroes of New York. Anyway, it's the people who did Until Dawn. That, that's what, um... I was going to say, they re released a trailer for that. Oh, that's S2 Games, that's right. Um, until Dawn Company. Who, they released a trailer for their next upcoming game, which seems to basically be like a kind of sequel, I suppose? To, well, no, it's not sequel. It's like the next installment, but not like um, a whole sequel to that story. But anyway, hello everyone. Right now in 400, it's 5.11pm on Friday, March 18th, 2022. We know Flick's here. Uh, Super Massive Games, there we go. That, that makes sense. Um... Yeah, they, uh, they, they released a trailer for The Quarry, which is going to be a uh, follow-up to Until Dawn, which, by the way, if you if you don't know what Until Dawn is, it's sort of like an interactive cinematic story thing, which very much plays into the stereotype of, like, old slasher fix from... Well, I don't really know where slasher fix are from. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be <laughs> particularly honest. N 90s? <laughs> Early 2000s? Uh, I'm not really sure of the exact time period because I haven't really, I don't think I've watched the slasher fic, I'm gonna be honest. And you might be like, hey, haven't you said that you kind of like horror? I do like horror, like conceptually, I like, I like the idea of horror, of like, sort of like lingering fear and that sort of thing, but um, the tense atmosphere, I, I'm not particularly into like slasher fics or anything like that, but a bit more like, um, it's sort of like a comedy of Sorry, a comedy, a, a combination of comedy and horror together, which is, I, I suppose, not as interesting to me. Pecan, unfortunately, uh, hold on. Uh, let me check how many days we have left until the anniversary. The Fawn Hollow anniversary, that is. I mean, technically it was on March 20th, which is going to be in two days, but uh, that was not really when we're going to be celebrating it, because I, I took a few days off on first year. Let's see, hold on. Well, on day, what, what day is this? Let me, let me have a look, let me have a look, let me have a look. 358, we have seven days. So that wasn't your last opportunity. Well, next Friday. Okay, so it'll be next Tuesday, I suppose, is when Pecan will be forced to be evicted if she don't give us her photo. Which would be a shame, but, you know, so be it. I thought it was today, for some reason. I don't know why I had Friday in my mind, but we'll put the, the Fawn Hollow Amiibo quote quote away. Yeah. Until Dawn is a very sort of fun, satirical... Well, I assume it's satirical. And, you know, I mean, I, I know it's kind of like satirical playing into those sort of, like, horror slasher... Um, not slasher fix, uh, slasher uh, movie tropes and that sort of thing, but to be fair, I suppose I can't really back it up with any evidence because I, it's not like I've seen Friday 13th, I haven't seen like Scream. I think I've seen one of the scary movies, but again, scary movies is kind of like a parody, so it's not like you can really say you've watched the OGs if you've seen a parody of the OGs in the first place. That seems a bit like a mm, roundabout way of going about it. Um, but yes, uh, what was I going to say about it? Yeah, Until Dawn is basically fun, it's cheesy, it's theatrical and all that sort of sense, and you're interactive, and it's interactive, you get to basically choose exactly, well not choose exactly what happens, you choose the decisions which are made, which have consequences, consequences of that sort of thing, and I love me, a branching story path from that sort of aspect. Of course it's not like, truly branching, you don't get like completely wildly different stories, well, you get pretty differently wildly stories, but they, they all sort of like converge along the same sort of, the same sort of general outline of a story, but then, um, the filling and the major plot points which happen are, are different. Um, by the way, I think it's like, it might be an 18 plus. <laughs> I don't know, so just just be a bit warned. It, it gets quite horrific. It, it can quite have um, horrifically brutal um, animations and stuff, shall we say, in it. As as you might expect, I suppose, from like um, a horror slasher and that sort of thing. But uh, anyway, so <laughs> that wasn't the point. The point is uh, they released a, a, a trailer uh, for their next upcoming game. Um, but quarry, and you know, uh, I saw it. It was just like massively upvoted on Reddit. I had no idea what it was, um, to be perfectly honest. Because I mean, it, it, uh, from the name itself, you can't really tell it's like a sequel to Undaw Until Dawn and that sort of thing. Um, but I saw it and I was like, oh, and, you know, why is it so upvoted? I was like, this seems interesting. I'll look up the trailer. And when I saw like the, the thumbnail for the trailer, I was like, hold on a minute, what's going on here? That's Brenda Song in the, in the middle of there. The only, um, the only actress or actor I recognised in the thing. I was like, what's Brenda Song doing in there? Also known as London Tipton from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and probably other things. She, she's in that movie, but I don't remember what that movie is, that other Disney Channel movie. And you know, ex Disney star. I guess they're getting all the ex Disney stars because Ashley Tisdale was in like Man of Medan, wasn't she? Um, which was one of the previous like installments in like their, their series of um, Until Dawn sort of follow ups they've had. So I was just like, oh, what's this? And when I watched it, and I was like, whoa, this is an Until Dawn sequel. 
that's cool. I didn't know that was happening. Um, as Brenda so features Brenda Son. If, if he, I mean, it features other actors and actresses. I don't really know them. The only one I recognised was uh, the dude who played the the lane, uh, not the lane, the, the main character in. Oh, I just combined lead and main there in Detective Pikachu. I, I can't remember his name. I wait, Detective Pikachu. It's not right, movie. I saw it and it and it's cute. <laughs> Apologies what I say. I'm not going to be like as particularly outrageous. I don't really remember much of what happens. I'm going to be perfectly honest, but it, it, it it's it's a fun romp, shall we say? But yeah, it's got that guy. It's got probably other people who are big names, but I'm not very like included into the sort of acting and world. So I'm kind of sort of like out the loop of who who anyone is, and <laughs> you know, because. I saw I saw Brenda Song and I saw that that guy and I was like oh that guy looks really familiar who is he and I looked him up I was like oh he's the guy from Detective Pikachu and then from every with every other actor and actress who appeared um, throughout the trailer I was just like they look really familiar as well who are they <laughs> I looked him up and didn't know who they were to be perfectly honest so really it's a, a sort of not cognitive bias but like um my mind was very influenced by the fact I recognised one of the actors and um, one of the actresses sorry and I was just like um, wow you know I must know one of them and then it turns out I know none, none of them. But you never know, they have quite a few like famous people I'm sure in the, the previous iterations of the game. Phoebe, you are ill, so let's go get you some medicine. Let's go practice medicine. Um because of course as I said I'm Ashley Tisdale and Man of Medan, which I think it was Man of Medan. Which is part of a like the, the dark pictures anthology, is that what it's called? Which is basically a load of like short stories, I suppose, in the until dawn sort of style. A sort of interactive story with a horror element twists. Were they any good? I'm trying to remember. I haven't played them, by the way. I've only watched people play them because I, I don't own a PlayStation, so I couldn't play them. So I, I couldn't play the original Until Dawn, but I just watched someone else play it. I, I watched two other people actually play it now, I think about it. Far from Saturn, and of course, Northern Nine. Um, at, you know, the usual. Um, but, um, yeah, I watched him play. Oh, wait, Man and Madan might have been the, the, the submarine one, right? The, I didn't. I watched him play a little bit of that, but then he had. A glitch or something when he played through and didn't finish it, or maybe he did finish it. I don't really remember. Uh, off the top of my head, there was one which was after that, which featured what's his name? It's like William Poulter or something. He he's a guy from um, Maze Runner. He's a guy from whatever that meme is when he's like, wait, you guys are getting paid? You know, he's that guy. Is that his name? Oh, he he's in uh, Bandersnatch. That's why I knew him from. Yeah, William Poulter. That's his name. We have a we have a Miller's. That's a mean thing. He's in Midsummer. I haven't seen Midsummer. He's in Chronicles of Narnia. Is he? Why does Dawn Shadow? Eustace Chronicles of Narnia. Who is this guy? I don't know if I recognise him. He's got a very distinctive face, so you'll probably recognise him if you see him. I haven't seen Midsummer. I heard, I heard good things about it though. I should watch it at some point. Because it's the same person as do Hereditary, I quite like Hereditary. On the topic of horror, I suppose, but, but those aren't like Sasha, horror, Sasha horrors. Like, um, you know, like Friday the 13th is Scream, but probably are. But there's another one, hold on. But is Nightmare on Elm Street like that? I don't actually know. <laughs> but these are just like popular or like older horror movies, which I know of, but um, give me that sort of vibe, hold on. This way you go, Sasha horror movies. Candyman? Oh, that's quite a recent one, isn't it? Oh, recent ones. Sasha Comedy, Sasha Fred is Smiley. Psycho? That's true. Oh, Chucky. You know, that sort of thing. Final Destination. I have seen one of the Final Destinations. I don't remember, like, anything about it. And I probably watched it when I was way too young. So, but, maybe, <laughs> probably shouldn't be, like, recommending these horror movies. No, I, I like horror movies more like, I like It. The first one, the second one, wasn't so hot on. Um, what other ones do I like? I, I really liked Hereditary, I'm going to be honest. Uh, Parasite, well, I guess Parasite's kind of more of a thriller, horror sort of thing. And I, oh, I won't... I don't know, I, I guess it's a bit more tenuous to put it in the same category as horror, it's more of a thriller. But I, I, like, I like things like that, I suppose. He's in Guardians of a Galaxy? William Poulter, that is. What? What? Who's he in Guardians of a Galaxy? Oh no, he's in the upcoming Guardians of a Galaxy. Yeah, the Maze Runner. Revenant? I feel like I've, I've seen Revenant, haven't I? It, this is like, yeah, it's Leonardo, Di Leonardo DiCaprio. We survived a bear attack. I, I remember literally nothing about this movie. <laughs> William Poulter's in it? William Poulter? I, I do not recall. Anyway, get him out of here. We're not, we're not here to talk about that yet. He was in one of the, the, the ones, one of the previous ones, along with that other person who also is familiar in my mind, but I can't place her name. 
But that's why you look up Dark Pictures Anthology, because I can't remember what they're, they're called. Dark Pictures Anthology. That is nice, that anthology. Dark Pictures anything. Anthology. Li oh, Little Hope, that's it. So Man and Madan was... A oh yeah, Little Hope was that one. House of Ashes. Which one's House of Ashes? Oh, uh, th this is the one with Ashley Tisdale in, right? Yeah, this is the one with Ashley Tisdale. By the way, it looked way, way more different than I record. I, I remember seeing her character in, in um, the game and being like, that's... <laughs> being like, this person looks kind of familiar, but also, like, not quite someone I got in my mind. And I was like, whoa, that's Ashley Tisdale. Like, now I see it. After, you know, it's like when you, when you tell someone the answer after... So you tell someone the answer after you ask them a question about something, you'd be like, oh, now I understand it. Didn't realise it before. Anyway, um, that was an interesting one. The Devil and Me. The Devil and Me? The Devil in Me. Dark Pictures. Has that come out? It's 2022. I don't think it's come out yet. Wait, hold on. So they announced the Dark Pictures one. Anthology coming out. But there's a second Dark Pictures anthology coming out? What? I had no idea about that. that. That's honestly the wildest thing. <laughs> I, I didn't know if there was a whole second series coming out. And they've got like an Until Dawn follow-up. My word. Getting a lot of funding. Because, you know, I do like these sort of cinematic games. And, you know, part of, <laughs> this is such a strange reason, but part of the reason I really like these games were like, okay, well, I'm not, not going to say like Until Dawn and whatever had like the top quality, like groundbreaking graphics, I suppose, but they, they look pretty nice and that sort of thing. It's when they get released at the time, you're like, what are you wearing, <laughs> Um, I'm like, oh, you know, that looks really... But this game looks so pretty, like, wow, it's almost like lifelike and that sort of thing. And then, and then, you know, you get to have the experience you have, like, five years down the line or so, even shorter period, I suppose, depending. And you look at it and you be like, wow, this game looks terrible. <laughs> I can't believe I used to think it was lifelike. Like, I remember when Heavy Rain first came out, this game which was released back in, like, 2010 or something. Um, a David Cage game by Quantic Dream or whatever. T terrible game, by the way, but, like... <laughs> Terrible in like a good way, you know, it's like, it's got heart in, in the sense that you can see what we're kind of going for, but like it, it's kind of got, it's very questionable at times, I suppose. It would be the way to put it. I remember when it got released, I was like, wow, this game is lifelike, it's photorealistic. And then, you know, you look back at it now and you're like, wow, it's terrible. And then they did it again with, um, uh, what was this? I don't know, what's it called? Beyond Two Salts. I was like, whoa, this game is fantastic. Look at that. It's like, it's like real life. It's like that person's literally in like... The TV, I suppose. I mean, I don't play it, I suppose. My computer screen would perhaps be a much more accurate thing. And then again, like, um, a couple of years later, you look at it and you're just like, wow, this looks um, terrible. <laughs> and then you go in, you know, you got Detroit Beyond Human, the follow up from that, and you're like, whoa, this looks amazing. And I can't wait to think, like, in a few years' time, where I look back in Detroit Beyond Human, I'm like, that looks terrible. You know? I, I love it when games do like that. That sort of thing. Well, not, it's not like they do it intentionally, because, you know, it's sort of like technology is advancing all the time, is what I mean. But, like, um, it's sort of like a, you, you might think it, I like it in a sort of like sadistic way, <laughs> I suppose. I'm just like, oh, look at how much they've fallen about something. No, I like it because it's like a sort of representative of how things come, how far things have come. So it's just like, you know, that's how much things have changed, I suppose, in that time period. Ima oh, I forgot Celeste was here yesterday, wasn't she? Imagine how things, just like, look at the things you think look really impressive now and imagine how impressive they're going to be in like, Five years down the line, like we're at that same time period passing. It's crazy. Um, right, I'm trying to think of games around that, which I probably have that same, sort of same experience with. Probably Life is Strange True Colors, because Life is Strange True Colors, I was like, wow, these, the like emotion that they can actually convey, like the subtle little details and, uh, in people's faces, their facial expressions, that's a word, if you're trying to speak like a human being, dear. Um, the, the, the subtle like facial expressions and twitches and things like that they put in to really like sell the emotions of a character's in Life and Strange True Colors. I was like, this is fantastic. And I'm sure like five years later, I'm gonna be like, wow, it's terrible. <laughs> it's all, all that sort of thing. Hold on, the Quantic Dream, do they have a, a game announced after, um, uh, whatchamacallit? Star Wars Eclipse, after Detroit become human. Doesn't seem like it. They have some Star Wars stuff. I'm not particularly all that interested in Star Wars, so. Well, <laughs> so much fat. Yeah, I don't know. Um, how I like slash fix. It, it's weird because I feel like I know so much about that sort of trope in the first place, despite the fact I've never consumed literally any of the media to do with it. You know, like Friday the 13th. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to be like, what most, most popular, most popular horror slashers of all time? 
And I'm thinking of a more of a, more of a comedic one. Ones with more comedic spin rather than ones with like a... Um, straight horror, I suppose. You know, Friday 13th, never seen. I know what you did last summer. This, by the way, on Parade.com, is this a good site? Repeatable? I don't know. Silent Night, Deadly Night, never seen. Friday 13th, never seen. Haunt? <laughs> for some, some reason, the picture just says guess of body parts, which is why I was so confused that for a second. Haunt, never seen. House of Wax? House of Wax I've heard of, but of course, never seen. Your Next, never seen. Nightmare Allergy, never seen. I'll just keep scrolling. <laughs> blood and Black Lace, never seen. Rowan, say hi to you. My Bloody Valentine, never seen. West Craven, seen Nightmare. Twitch of Death Nerve, Final Destination. I, I don't know which Final Destination I've seen. I don't remember. Maybe I haven't seen one. Oh, hey, Biscuits here. Hello. Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Screen 2, It Follows. What is this? Wait, wait that's Screen 2. I'm trying to associate, figure out which picture's which. Cabin in Woods. This I've seen a part of, but I haven't actually seen the whole thing. I don't know why, to be honest. Oh, good things about it. Freaky, haven't seen. American Psycho, haven't seen. Sleepaway Camp, haven't seen. Candyman, haven't seen. Child's Play, haven't seen. Black Christmas, haven't seen. Nightmare on Elm Street, haven't seen. Scream, haven't seen. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, haven't seen. Alien, haven't seen. Uh, obviously good things about that. Halloween, haven't seen. Psycho, haven't seen. Peeping Tom, haven't seen. All right, so I've, I've seen literally none of those. I, I don't know why it's, uh, I'm not sure, okay. No, I don't know why, like, slasher horrors are such like a pervasive thing, I suppose, in media, why they're so like prominent, I suppose. <laughs> because obviously it's, it's like a sort of good, Good fun, you know. One one thing about horror, like people like to be scared. I suppose it's all, it's all in good fun in that sort of sense. But obviously, it's very sort of um, tiring, I suppose, to watch a horror movie. You know, being constantly at sort of like at a high tension, like heart racing sort of stage, state, even not stage. It, it's a it's a very exhausting thing to do. Um, well, I, I suppose not everyone necessarily finds it that exhausting but you know you can certainly understand why it'd be exhausting you know it's sort of like doing intensive exercise your heart's always going like crazy fast etc 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 you can certainly see like um well, perhaps more light-hearted much more like i suppose i shouldn't say light-hearted because it's still very like <laughs> in brutal shall we say but i suppose it's it's because it's so brutal it sort of like loops around to being like light not light-hearted but comedic again doesn't it what am i buying oh medicine that's right um it's just like so over the top that you can't help just be like, what is going on? At least that's my understanding of it. Of course, everything I'm saying is sort of like out of ignorance because I don't really know. But this is just sort of like, um, one of my friends, he, re he really likes like, um, horror movies, but he very much likes the sort of like the comedic slash fix style of horror movies where it's just like so over the top, so over dramatic, that sort of thing. Or the, you know, the sort of like blood parties and of, um, movies and that sort of thing. Do we have enough? We have enough customization kits. He finds them amusing while I'm, of course, I'm very other end, while like intense, creeping, sort of lingering horror and that sort of aspect. Psychological thrillers in that sort of sense. And that's how he describes it to me. He likes it because it's comedic. He likes, you know, not because they make him scared, but because he likes to laugh. And he's a very comedic sort of person, you know, he likes to spread happiness wherever he goes. And I suppose perhaps it matches our personalities in certain aspects. I like the deep emotional dives, not like oh, I like psychological horror and that sort of, <laughs> like in real life. I, I can't particularly say I do. Um, have I had a coherent thought? I'm not sure if I had a coherent thought this entire time. <laughs> but certainly you can understand, I suppose, why it, why it's so popular. It's sort of like a relaxed horror, you know. You get you get the horror elements, the, the fun and the thrills of like riding, riding a roller coaster, but you know, like a roller coaster doesn't actually, you know, try and destroy you. Why did I? I meant to customize. Why did I craft? <laughs> but it's weird how how much you can sort of like. I was going to say by osmosis, that's not really the right term. Um, but sort of like passively learn about um, like this entire genre, which I've never seen or never participated in. You know, you've got very stereotypical like characters which always appear. You know, you've got like the final girl. They always need to be here. Oh, we customised this really recently, didn't we? The final girl always needs to be like the last girl left alive who needs to defeat the bad guy in the end or something. You've got like a... A brain dead jock or whatever, not brain dead, that's a bit harsh, but like um, a dumb jock or whatever, who's all like, who's all brawn and he's probably trying to fight the bad guy and you know, gets ra rather brutal. Uh, I'm just like smushing words together in my mind, it's not what I mean to do. Brutal slash violent death, you got someone who's, shall we say, a bit of a flirt, a bit of a tease, you got like, who else? 
You got like a quite shy one. You got like the nerdy, the nerdy guy and that sort of thing. I don't know why. You know, these trips are just so pervasive. I suppose it's the fact that they've been mocked so much, but they've been parodied, and they show up in so much like fiction. I suppose in that sort of as like co cookie cutter, like easily identifiable tropes, which could easily be sort of like parody in that sort of sense. Uh, they're so 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 common that even just by consuming other media, you can also sort of understand and I was say relate. I guess relate's not really the right word either. You can sort of understand and recognize those patterns as well, you know? Maybe, that's just a theory, a game theory. <laughs> I guess it's more like a film theory now I think about it, but still. Um, I suppose we can go to TV Tropes and go... We probably have a TV Tropes and... TV Tropes slash a movie. Slash a movie. Is this the official thing they're called? Let's see what properly defines a slash a movie according to TV Tropes. No indestructible serial killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I, I want to see tropes. I want to see character tropes. Tropes applicable to the genre. Adults are useless. Anyone can die. Do, 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 do. Don't go into the woods. Guns are useless. My car hates me. Yeah, that, that, that's a trope. You know, the car doesn't start. Why won't it start? The car stores and that sort of thing. That was my car store noise. It was terrible. Don't judge me. Oh, we're going to give Phoebe um, do, 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 some medicine. I forgot. Some more reference balls. What does that even mean? Judging by another parodies that feature a hockey mask and chainsaw trope. It says if Friday the 13th and Texas chainsaw mask are the only Sasha fix ever made. Fair enough. Stealth high by. Sasha films with TV tropes articles. Oh my word, there's so many. Homages. <laughs> homages, nice. Homages. Parodies and other stuff regarding the genre. Video games. Camp Sunshine. What on earth is this? I feel like I've seen this before. You look terrible, Phoebe. Let's give you some medicine. We're chewy. I brought some medicine, don't you worry. Dead by lit daylight. Maybe that's why I know so much about it. You know? There's Dead by Daylight, there's Friday with 13 sort of games. Which, you know, I watch a lot of gameplay of, but, you know, never actually played myself. I suppose because. The appeal to me isn't quite fair because I'm, you know, I haven't actually watched any of the movies, I suppose. Oh, no, I think about it. Until Dawn should be on here. Oh, yeah, last year. The Nightmare. Man, I remember when last year the Kickstarter first came out. There was a lot of controversy around it because the person who was basically pitching it was someone who basically never, like, made a game before. But was just, like, a concept artist or something. And then they actually made a game, so that's pretty cool. Get on run. What's up? Here's Until Dawn. So, yeah. If you want to watch some Until Dawn, you're curious about it, and you you know can't play it because you don't have a PlayStation 4 or whatever um, console it came out on, I'd recommend Northern Lions play through of it. I thought it was very entertaining. <laughs> but maybe you don't like Northern Lions, in which case, fair enough. You know, you, you know your your YouTube is that you like to watch. You should go watch and play it because I'm not going to play it. I'm going to be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, what should we do? We, could, we uh, I guess we'll do. Sorry, that was a very like shrill. What should we do? Um, let us. Deep sea dive? Flowers? I guess we'll do deep sea diving and then we'll do the, the radio exercises and then we'll round off this episode here. You might be like, what you've been up to today? Uh, I should be doing a thumbnail lab, but I haven't, haven't really. <laughs> took, a, took a break from it. It, it. it is a bit draining, I suppose, doing a load of coloration, I suppose. <laughs> so, so I took a little bit of break uh, this morning and didn't really work on it. Um, let's see, visual novels? Anime? Advertising? It was a Nike commercial. My word. Yeah, like even even though I've never seen the movies, I'm pretty sure I, I knew about the hockey mask and the chainsaw. You know, far before I was even aware that slash and horror was even like a, a genre. I suppose. <laughs> you might be like, how well would you do in a slash horror flick? I think I would not do very well. I'm going to be honest. I, I I think it's I think the people like sort of kids of themselves that they'll do a lot better in a horror scenario than they actually would. Horror scenarios are very stressful, you know? So, you know, as if I know, I mean, I suppose I don't really know, but... Maybe I do amazingly well, but I can't imagine I do particularly well. <laughs> I can't imagine I'd be very stealthy with my persistent cough. I don't think I'd be able to hide very well. I'm not particularly athletic. I can sprint, but I can't... I'm not very good at, you know, like, long-distance running or anything like that. Hello, little umbrella octopus. So, you know, I don't really reckon my, um... Odds are all too good. But I suppose, you know, one benefit of having um, being in a slasher horror is the fact that you um, you had to appeal to, you had to be one of the tropes, right? That's, that, so what trope would I be in a slasher movie? I don't really know. 
a nice one, maybe? <laughs> I like to think I'm kind of nice. Perhaps I'm not, though. Would a nice person say they're nice? I guess that's more humility, isn't it? Which, by the way, humility, I think, you know, you, you can be humble and also be aware of, like, how good you are in that certain sense. You just don't, don't let it get to your head about something. You remain grounded. Someone who's expertly good at something saying, uh, no, I'm terrible at this, is not humble. I know. That's my controversial, that's my hot take for you today. You know, just saying you're bad at something doesn't make you humble. <laughs> humble is having awareness about it, but being grounded in reality at the same time. If you're an expert at something, it's not being a braggart about it, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, Amelia, Amelia's clothing choice is very strange. What's that, like a sprite costume or something? <laughs> Anyway, that's got nothing to do with what I'm talking about today. I don't know what I'm talking about today, you know? I don't know what I've been talking about for the past couple of days. I don't I, I don't know, like, any of the conversations I've been particularly saying, I suppose, throughout the previous episodes. I'm just trying to think. So, anyway, I guess along the short way, it was like, you know, the chasm certainly looks interesting. Hopefully they can sort of nail that sort of, um, comedic... Uh, maybe comedic's not the right word, but the sort of, like, um, theatrical charm. Quirky charm that they got going on in the, in the previous games. Which, you know, was a big selling point, I thought. I thought certainly for Until Dawn. <laughs> the cheesy dialogue, especially. That's what it's all about. Had its good moments. Um, yeah, I suppose if you're looking for a game with a particularly deep plot or anything like that, then it's probably not really the way to go. It's not got, like, hard-hitting themes. Or ideas, or challenges, any sort of, like, status quo. It's just sort of like a, a fun, fun old time. <laughs> I suppose it's a bit outdated nowadays, though. I wonder if I looked at it now if I'd still think its graphical fidelity was really up to snuff. Probably. I seem to remember it looking pretty decent. That's why I had to, you know, open Google again. Sorry, don't mind me. Until doing. That's not you spell it. I didn't jump. I mean, still it looks pretty alright. That's probably what I'll say. Yeah, it looks fine. Anyway, Until Dawn's spiritual successor. I can't believe they have a Dark Bridges anthology simultaneously coming out with this The Quarry release. Actually, wouldn't it? The Quarry game. When did they say it was being released? Official, official website. Hopefully this doesn't play sound. June 10th, 2022. Wow, they really do have simultaneous things going on like that. Anyway, um, I don't know what I've been talking about. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Let's round off this episode here. So, if you have been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Likes, comments, subscription, shares are greatly appreciated. Join me, Dear Darling, Discord, follow me on Twitter down below. Hope we can see each other again, but for now, it's our farewell. So, until next time, bye bye for now.